Hello, it is the 2nd of November 2020. It is a Monday, Monday morning, it's about 28 degrees. And we're in Chermside, suburb of Chermside. Chermside's a major suburb of the city of Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. And uh, this suburb, Chermside, is situated just nine kilometres north of Brisbane CBD. And right into the distance there, if I can zoom up, you'll see some of the high-rise buildings. There we are, that's Brisbane CBD, where you can see those high-rise buildings in the distance. And we're about uh, nine kilometres away from that in the suburb of Chermside, which is North Brisbane. I hope I can get this zoom back again. Yep, looks like it. That's better. It's about nine to 11 in the morning, on this Monday morning in the suburb of Chermside. In the 2011 census, Chermside recorded a population of around 8,170 people. We've got an emergency going on there. Chermside's a key destination along Queensland's Transport Future Northern Busway and home to Westfield Chermside, the largest Westfield shopping centre in Australia and perhaps the, or one of the largest in the Southern Hemisphere with three-storey mire and a 16-screen cinema complex. Together with Indrapilly, which is in the west of Brisbane, Carindale in the southeast, and Upper Mount Gravatt on the south side of Brisbane, Chermside where we are now has been described as a mini CBD. We're looking at Gympie Road right now and you can see that median strip there going right along and sort of where those traffic lights are in the distance. That's where the trams used to run along and finish at the traffic lights. That was the most northern destination or the furthest north the trams in Brisbane would go and finish at that point. And there were rose gardens all along there. It's a shame they're not there now. What we're looking at, uh, oh, the truck's just got in the way there. So I can walk past the truck. There's a building there with that brown facade. It says 708 Brisbane North Eye Centre up the top there. Well, in that area there used to be the Dawn Picture Theatre. I remember going in there, they had canvas seats. And the Dawn Theatre first opened in 1928. I'm not that old, I didn't go to the opening of it. <laughs> but I do remember going there when I was a kid. And when the Dawn Theatre first opened in 1928, showing The Man Who Laughs, it drew big crowds, but the Dawn Theatre closed on the 2nd of August 2005 with the showing of the movie Mr and Mrs Smith. By the way, when the Dawn Picture Theatre uh, was there just before the closing. It was the last single screen cinema in Brisbane. So the Chermside area was first settled by Europeans in the late 19th century and the first plot of land was sold on the 23rd of May 1866 and the population has progressively increased since with a significant increase with post-war residential development. 
And when the Gympie Gold Rush started in 1867, many tra travellers, rather, heading north would run into trouble at a creek in present-day Chermside. And because of this waterway, Chermside was first known as Downfall Creek. That's what the creek was called, Downfall Creek. And that's uh, along Hamilton Road, Downfall Creek. And when we do another video, I'll take you down there to actually have a look at Downfall Creek. But in November 1868, Cobb Co stagecoaches began to travel through the area on the way to the gold fields at Gympie. So Brisbane's tramway network finally reached the suburb of Chermside on the 29th of March, 1947. And Chermside remained the northernmost point on the system until the line to Chermside was closed on the 2nd of December 1968. The tram line along Gympie Road was separated from other traffic that uh, is commonly called reserved track, which resulted in fast travel times along that portion of the route. And another feature of the Chermside tram line, as we mentioned before, were the rose gardens which bordered the reserved track portion of the line. And uh, where we're walking now is still heading north. Just over these bins here, you can see a bit of graffiti back here, we might just have a look at that. Very talented graffiti artists. You can get really ugly graffiti, can't you? But you can get some really artistic, good-looking graffiti as well. Whoa. Sorry about that. So we're continuing to walk down toward Westfield Shopping Centre, which is the largest Westfield in Australia and perhaps one of the largest in the Southern Hemisphere. So this suburb's name was changed to Chermside in 1903 after the Governor of Queensland, Sir Herbert Chermside. Chermside State School, then called Downfall Creek State School, was opened on the 9th of July 1900 and closed on the 13th of December 1996. Craigslee State School then opened on the 24th of January 1972 and the neighbouring Craigslee State High School in January 1975. So the early 1970s saw the opening of Queensland's first Kmart store in Chermside, and that was situated much further down Gympie Road and over the hill past Marchands Park. But uh, that's not there anymore. It closed in the mid 1990s and uh, it's been replaced with a Woolworth supermarket both Kmart and Coles that used to be right down Gympie Road over the hill past Marchants Park are now located at Westfield Shopping Centre. So I mentioned Marchant Park before and we're not going to be walking to Marchant Park but it's along Gympie Road, heading north in the, in the direction that I'm walking. 
and it's just past Westfield Shopping Centre on the right. It's a very large park. And uh, these uh, large parks, 7th Brigade Park and Marchant Park, is on land donated on the 9th of September 1921 by soft drink manufacturer George Marchant. And before and during World War I, this land had been variously the home of artillery and light horse units. And during World War II, a diverse range of volunteers, soldiers and camps were at Chermside, such as the US Army units, including a number of African-American soldiers. And by the way, a Kitty Hawk airplane on a training flight crashed there in 1943, killing the pilot and instructor. Chermside had a library, and the library was actually along, right around this area here where I'm standing. That's where, almost, if I'm right, that's where the Chermside, the original Chermside library used to be, just in front here. But now there's a brand new Chermside Library. But, the Chermside, but Chermside has had a library since 1909 and since 1951 it has been a branch of the Brisbane City Council Library Service and has a major, and had a major rather, refurbishment back in 2017. So now the library is situated next to the Kedron Wavell RSL, which is down Hamilton Road. I'm going to show you some history fairly soon. We'll go to a park where one of the first houses were built in this area. One of the earliest settlers in Chermside was Andrew Hamilton who purchased acreage there in 1875. That land included today's, uh, is, is actually included in today's Thomas Street. So recently returned from the Gympie Gold Rush, Hamilton tried his hand at farming in Chermside, but that didn't work out too well. So Hamilton opened a successful blacksmith shop on Gympie Road, which also served as a local post office. Now that original blacksmith shop, it's not being used as a blacksmith shop anymore, but it's uh, further down Gympie Road in the direction that I'm working. And it's diagonally opposite March and Park. And they've kept the original blacksmith gates in place and I believe it's heritage listed. There's a real estate business in there right now, but they've kept the uh, facade of that original blacksmith shop. And when I was a kid, I remember it being used as a blacksmith shop. I saw the guy bashing out steel and the fire raging in that blacksmith shop when I was a kid. I stood there watching fascinated. So that blacksmith shop that I was talking about on Gympie Road also served as the local post office as well. Hamilton's only son, Thomas Andrew Hamilton, became a councillor for Kedron Shire and was uh, also particular in diarising everything. T.A. Hamilton kept detailed daily diaries from 1890 until his death in 1951 at the age of 91. And most of the diaries survive, are uh, now being digitised and transcribed by the Chermside and District Historical Society. Hamilton Road, we've just now turned onto Hamilton Road from Gympie Road, is named after Andrew Hamilton. And we're here in Hamilton Road now, and we're looking across Gympie Road, and that's Hamilton Road right in front of you going up the hill into the distance. There's Westfield Shopping Centre. We'll be going into Westfield Shopping Centre, hopefully, just to have a brief look inside. Westfield Chermside, the shopping centre, was first opened in May 1957 as the Chermside Drive-In Shopping Centre with Allen and Stark's department store and a small arcade of a dozen shops before becoming the My Department Store. That was the uh, biggest store around, the My Department Store around Chermside. It was, by the way, the first drive-in shopping centre in Australia 
It is now the largest single level shopping centre in Australia with, uh, that, as we said before, that three storey mire, as well as that 16 screen Birch, Carol and Coyle Megaplex. And uh, it was also home to Brisbane's first Apple store. The Apple store is still in there. So we're going to go up Thomas Street now and we're going to have a look at that area where Andrew Hamilton purchased acreage there back in 1875, one of the earliest settlers in this area. Lots of high density accommodation. going to make, make our way up to where this first house was in the area. The home and the, the home and the acreage are no longer there, the original home. There's some pictures of it though I'd like to show you. And perhaps just a little bit more history. more apartments. but those vacant blocks will be built on soon. Getting into suburban Chermside here. So the land that the Thomas family had as acreage included this street we're walking down now but the actual property is not on this street. 
I'm pretty sure if we turn left and go down Hall Street, we will come to that area. It looks like it's just up here. Yeah, here, it's up here. We're almost there. Almost. for this traffic to go by. Here's some more history. Okay, take a good look at this park here. It's called Burnie Bray Park. And here's some history. I'll show you those photos in more detail soon, but we'll just read some of this. In 1866, Andrew and Margaret Hamilton set sail from England for Australia on the steamship Ocean Empress with their children Charlotte, Margaret and Thomas. And after settling in Brisbane's Fortitude Valley and later Gregory Terrace, Andrew Hamilton sought his fortune on the Gympie goldfields a year later. It was in Gympie that a fellow miner offered him 20 acres of land in Brisbane at a place called Dead Man's Gully. That's down further at Hamilton Road. But after inspecting the site, Andrew Hamilton purchased it for £12, equivalent to $24, and the area was later known as Downfall Creek before being renamed Chermside in 1903. Family lived in Dead Man's Gully in a small hut until 1873. Andrew Hamilton then set about building a new home to become known as Bernie Bray, which is Scottish for Hill by the Stream. So the park named after the name of the home. The foundations of the house in this park were constructed in a unique way. Two large trees which were standing where the house was to be built, each about two feet in diameter, were cut down and the house was built on those logs. They were laid on their two natural stumps and two other stumps and the logs were uh, dazed off flat to make the two main bottom plates of the building. More stumps were located around outside of the building for the veranda. The homestead was constructed from local cedar gum 
and iron bark trees chosen from the surrounding hills. The door and sashes were made from planks of cedar that were purchased from the passing bullock drivers. Leftover pieces were expertly crafted into furniture. When completed, Bernie Bray featured eight large rooms surrounded by a huge veranda. Andrew Hamilton opened the first business in Chermside in 1872, a wheelwright and blacksmith shop. Many other businesses subsequently opened between 1872 and 1900, including grocery stores, blacksmiths, a saddler, slaughter yards, a tannery, and wool scour, building contractors, a dairy farm and milk rum, a drapery and a butcher. The post office opened in 1886, followed by the Downfall Creek School, later named Chermside in 1900, and the police station in 1904. So Andrew Hamilton started growing fruit trees on the land, including mango trees, cherry guava trees, and huge bunya pines right here. And he purchased mango seeds for uh, two and sixpence, equivalent to 25 cents today. And the trees produced enough fruit for the entire district. This provided many years of happiness for the Hamilton family. However, in 1947, the property was resumed by the government of the day for public housing. Thank you, we'll take your property. And despite a battle by Andrew Hamilton's son, Thomas, to try and prevent the sale, the house Bernie Bray was demolished, sadly, in 1952. How could they demolish an historic home like that? The park today, this site, the site was eventually to become Annan Park. However, in 1997, the area was renamed Bernie Bray Park following a story about the local, local significance in the paper. The park today is used by a variety of user groups. The Bernie Bray Senior Citizen Centre is located in the park. The rotunda is used for concerts or friends to meet and children to frequent the park to utilise the play equipment. Brisbane City Council is grateful to Joan Hamilton for her contribution of the photos and information for this sign. So that's the house right there. That's the original house that they pulled down. It was just taken off the family, pulled down. It's now a park. That's uh, early Chermside. This is from the park looking toward Gympie Road. So this park here, looking back down that way. This is my, Mrs. Margaret Hamilton, 1825 to 1915. Andrew Hamilton himself, 1825 to 1897. Having to hold this camera right up high to get these photos. I hope you can see them all right. We'll just take a couple of quick looks at these photos. The first motor car owned in Chermside in 1909. I can't see it around the streets today though. <laughs> Wonder why. And HFM Hamilton coach and motor body builder shop in the 1920s. So Bernie Bray Park named after the house that was on this park. All right, we'll just walk back down. Toward Westfield Shopping Centre. Hope you enjoyed that piece of history on Chermside. I won't show you too much because shopping centres are almost all the same, aren't they? A few exceptions, I suppose variations here and there but it is the largest Westfield shopping centre in Australia and could be one of the largest in the southern hemisphere I'm pretty sure it is Chermside is a very handy suburb there's a lot of public transport
buses are the main, I suppose, transport, public transport. There's no railway line coming through Chermside at all. Now we're heading back down toward Hamilton Road. Some more units. We can cross the road here. That's the, uh, the library, just zoom up onto there. That's the new location of the Chermside Library. There's a business centre in there, the library down below. style of some of the early homes in Chermside. We might just continue up and then cross and then go into the shopping centre just for a brief time.
It's good they've tried to keep Chan side fairly green with these trees. Okay, we'll just cross at the lights up here, go into the shopping centre and then we'll finish this video walk on Chermside. Don't forget to subscribe, just click subscribe and then you'll be notified on future walking videos that I'm doing. Really value those subscribers who I already have. Thank you for subscribing and I really appreciate new subscribers as well. If I get over a thousand, I can do live streams, which means I can talk to you in real time as well. You can ask me any questions you want. Perhaps even if you have a suggestion for a video walk, I'll see if I can do it for you. Little bit of history on the trams here, I'll just show you quickly. Trams finished here in Chermside, it's the northerly uh, most point. There's an old tram line that, down there for you to look at, part of anyway. The first horse drawn trams appeared in Brisbane in 1885 and the first electric trams in 1897. The line reached Kedron Brook in 1915 and Lutwich Cemetery in 1925. But passengers had to walk across the Kedron Bridge to the tram on the other side. So a new bridge in 1927 made the journey continuous. Chermside has still had a two kilometre walk to the tram, but the track finally terminated at the intersection of Hamilton and Gympie Roads, virtually where we are now on the 30th of March 1947. Chermsiders now had cheap all-weather transport right to the city and it was essential for the house building boom that followed, the city had arrived in Chermside. At that time, the automobile age was beginning in Australia. It took approximately 20 years, plus the disastrous Paddington Depot fire to bring about the demise of the city's excellent tramway system. The last trams ran on the 13th of April 1969. This tram rail section, which we looked at, donated by Thies John Holland Airport Link Project, shows a rail joint welded together and further secured with fish plates and heavy bolts. A base support plate was then welded underneath to ensure electrical conductivity for the 600 volt DC current. A copper bridging link was welded across the joint. So there it is again. Electrical DC power was supplied via the overhead network of copper trolley wires with a spring-loaded trolley pole taking the power to the moving vehicle. Every aspect of tram car design, construction and maintenance was carried out at the Brisbane City Council Tramway Workshops at Coronation Drive, Milton. In the 1960s, the Brisbane-made tram cars were regarded as world leaders in design and construction. And there is a tramway museum at Fernie Hills in Brisbane for those wanting to look 
first hand at these trams. You might remember riding in a tram yourself. I do, when I was a lot younger. So we're just gonna cross here now and go into the Chermside Shopping Centre. We've just recently extended onto this shopping centre. It's huge, absolutely massive. We've got an excellent eating area here in the shopping centre as well. Another shot of Maya in there. Good to see some of these Christmas decorations are up. Although there'll be a lot of people doing it really tough this Christmas. We just come down this corridor here that goes up for another half a kilometre. Goes way up there, there's a Lego store here too, which is up here further. A lot of people are into Lego, including myself. Christmas decorations. They have a massive tree in this spot. I don't think they've put it up yet. It's not great for the kids. It goes up to the cinemas and some more food courts. We'll have a look at that later, but I'll just quickly show you the Lego shop and then we'll finish our video.
a dedicated Lego store, this one. Can buy Lego in other stores. But if you can't find what you're looking for, you may find it at the dedicated Lego store instead. Boy, this walkway goes for ages. Wouldn't take much to do five, six kilometres just walking around here. Great to see so many people about. A lot of these retailers have done it really, really tough. Some have not survived with this rotten COVID-19. Others have. Gee, I hope I can find it. I wonder if I'm in the right area. I think I am. I should be able to see that distinctive red and yellow Lego signage soon. Yep, pretty sure it's just up here. Uh, that's why I couldn't see it, because it's covered up with balloons. It's an amazing uh, Lego for sale here. That's their... Um, it's their new bat plane they have there. It's the haunted house. Still for sale. Lego creator with all their houses that you can build in conjunction with the Lego trains if you want to do that and make your own Lego city. Here's the Disney castle. Some of these may be discontinued fairly soon.
to Harry Potter stuff there. There's a Lego mural there. All made out of Lego. Nineteen eighties Batmobile. So they're always changing their displays in this Lego shop, which is a good thing. Steamboat Willie, I've got that one. Pirates of Barracuda Bay, I'd love to get that. You can build it like that, or you can build it as an actual pirate ship, which is on the back of the box. The White House. They had this one on display not so long ago. It's an excellent Lego store, this one. By the time I, every time I come to Westfield, I usually pay a visit. And they've also got a wall on the back for all those miscellaneous Lego pieces you may need. Okay, well, that's it. Thank you very much for watching this video walk on Chermside. I appreciate it. And uh, please, I would be very grateful if you subscribed, extremely grateful. And if I get over a thousand subscribers, I can do live streams and I can talk to you in real time as I'm doing these streams. But I need over a thousand subscribers. But right now, as this is a video, you can still make your comments down below and I will get back to you. And if you have a video walk suggestion of somewhere in Brisbane or even further afield, let me know and I will try my best to do it for you. So this is Jeff, a.k.a. Explorer Man, signing off.